So I'm sitting in a room right now that I should have soundproofed quite a while ago, my home office, where life got in the way and I never got around of doing it yet. But in the meantime, I've had a lot of people asking questions on cheapest way to soundproof a room because you go online and you see a lot of videos how to soundproof a room for 20 bucks. Well, I've done a video talking about that video, link right there. And the thing is, if you go watch those videos, you'll be quite disappointed because if you follow those types of advice, how to soundproof a room for $20, how to soundproof a room for $50, it usually doesn't work. You'll go ahead, buy the products they recommend, and you'll be just I've looked online and tried to find alternative products that I've recommended in the past that the prices has gone up so much because one thing that I've also learned, if you buy a product that has the word acoustic on it, like acoustic sealant, that's just a way for them to raise the price. The sad truth is if you go around online and try to find some products that are for acoustics, acoustic sealant, for example, because it gives them more reasons to think that the product is a lot more than what it actually is. So I did find some products that are comparable to products that I used to recommend at a fraction of the price. And I'll have links of all these products in the description below. First thing that you need to do is where is the sound coming from? The reality is most of the noise coming into a room is either coming in from a door or a window. So if you go ahead and soundproof a wall, you might be quite disappointed because you could have just soundproofed the door. And also using the word soundproof can also be misleading because Really what we're trying to achieve is sound reduction. So let's start with where most of the noise is probably coming in, which is the door. And these things will not be used to soundproof the door because a lot of people online is saying, just take these acoustic foam thingies here and it will soundproof the door. What this is, is for sound deadening, not soundproofing. If you stick these all over your door, you will be quite disappointed. And these aren't exactly cheap anymore. If you want about 24 of these, you'll pay around $50. We'll talk about these a little bit later in the video, but don't use these to soundproof. The best way to do it is to seal all the cracks. Look at the door, turn off the lights in the room that you're in, close the door, turn the lights on in the opposite room. And is there a lot of light bleeding through around the door under the, the bottom of the door? If there's a lot of light bleeding through, there's noise bleeding through. They say, and who is they? I have no idea. The experts, perhaps. They say that only a crack will let about 50% of the noise back into the room. Now, if that's true, how's about we just seal that gap? With acoustical caulking, now, it has that word in front of it, acoustical. So, price just went up. We have to find an alternative that works the same way. The difference between acoustical sealant, acoustical caulking, and regular caulking is that the biggest difference is it, it will not dry and crack over time. Regular caulking will dry and as the house shifts, as you get very angry and you slam doors, that caulking will crack and will let noise back in. You wouldn't think it would, just those little hairline cracks, but it does. Now what I recommend instead of acoustical sealant is called Red Devil Caulking. It's 779 at recording of this video on Amazon and this stuff is guaranteed not to shrink, not to crack. So where do you put it? Well, on your screen, this is exactly where you put it. Around where the door meets that small casing, you have to seal that gap. What you should do first is take some small nails and make sure that it is properly affixed to the wall. After that's done, make sure that the area is clean and dry and then add your caulking, let that dry. After that's done, you want to create a better seal when you close the door because a lot of the time, if you close the door, does the door wobble a bit? If it wobbles, noise is coming through. You want to stop that wobble. How do you do that? You can use weather stripping. Weather stripping is cheap. You can get weather stripping for under $10. However, you can go a step further and add something called a door seal kit. And it's around $50 and at recording of this video, it's on sale for, I believe, $45. Video right there, I install it, I test it, and it works pretty well. It works better than a weather strip, but it's five times more expensive and it's more work to install. Now, after that's done, you still have one gap at the bottom of the door. That lets a lot of noise in. Now, there is an issue here because if you, you don't want to restrict too much airflow. 
there is something that you can do just to see if it does restrict airflow, just add a blanket at the bottom of the door. Now, if you want a more permanent solution, you can add a bottom door sweep. Now the door sweep that I recommend is under $10 and it's a U-shaped door sweep. These U-shaped door sweeps I find works very well. You order it, it comes in one size and you just cut it to the width of your door and you'll notice a lot of sound reduction. Now after you've added your bottom door sweep, your door seal kit or your weather stripping and your Cusco caulking, no, not a Cusco caulking, your red devil caulking, your room will be a lot more soundproof than it was. The amount of noise coming in will have been reduced. Will it cost you more than $20? It actually doesn't have to. If you just go with the caulking and the weather strip and then throw a blanket on the floor to stop the noise from bleeding in, yeah, you can soundproof the door for under $20. Works a lot better than sticking these on the wall, I can tell you that. Now after all that's done, you can still go a step further and add something in front of the door to make it more soundproof, to block some noise and also make the room sound better. No, it's not these. It's a moving blanket or two moving blankets. Moving blankets are thicker, they're heavier than regular blankets. They're better than just using some curtains and they'll block noise and they'll make the room sound better. How you hang the curtains also is, is by using Velcro. What you do, you just staple the Velcro or you can actually sew it onto the moving blanket. Industrial Velcro works a lot better because blankets are quite heavy. You might be wondering, well, these blankets, how much do they cost? Well, moving blankets don't cost that much. You can get two moving, well, you can get one moving blanket for 17 bucks, but let's forget about that. Let's get two moving blankets for $20. That's a lot cheaper than acoustic foam, and you can actually use it for different things. Also, the moving blankets will not only block some noise coming in through the door, but will also make the room sound better. It'll do what these things are meant to do. You add those plush material on a flat, hard surface, it will absorb some sound waves. It's not going to absorb enough sound waves to actually block a lot of the noise, but it will make a little bit of a difference and it will not break the bank, which is good and you can use it for other things. That's it with the door. Let's move on. If you're having troubles with the window, the window is a little bit uh, more of a challenge because to add stuff on the window to make it a lot more soundproof will cost you a lot of money. Changing the windows to really thin, single pane windows to double or triple pane windows, that's quite costly. There are ways to reduce the amount of noise coming through the window by using the caulking that I was talking about in the door. You can use that around the window frame, around the window where the window meets the frame, and those cracks will bleed noise in. Not a whole lot of noise, but if you already have the caulking, bring it over to the window. Also, after that's done, you can use the moving blankets block the window with moving blankets. Use the double-sided Velcro and that will work. But you can also use blackout curtains. Now blackout curtains, sound deadening curtains, it's, it's, it's more, yes, it's more sound deadening curtains than sound proofing curtains, but they will stop a little bit of the noise from coming in. The thing is, is try, if you can, just buy a single panel one single panel because one wide single panel will work better than two panels because you'll avoid getting that slice right in the middle making noise bleed into the room if you do that you will reduce a little bit of the noise coming in from outside it's not going to be huge i can't i'm not going to lie to you and tell you that you're going to reduce the noise by 50 percent or 25 percent what it's going to do it's going to deaden especially road noise. If you're dealing with a lot of road noise, that those high-pitched noise it are going to be deadened a little bit. Now, by deadening that noise, it'll make the noise a lot less annoying, but it might just be enough to make the room peaceful enough for you. So now the walls. Well, the walls is a little bit more tricky because I am not going to sit here and tell you to add these on the wall. Adding mass on the wall is what's going to soundproof your wall. It's that simple. You have to add mass. You have to add mass. Less sound waves are able to go through. If you can do it yourself, adding the drywall on the wall that has the most noise coming through, then you will be a lot happier than adding some acoustic foam that I threw somewhere or some acoustic panels. If you have to hire somebody, it'll be more expensive. 
Now you can elevate the amount of soundproofing by adding some mass loaded vinyl, a sheet of it, in between the two layers of drywall. Now mass loaded vinyl is a very dense, very heavy, but thin rubber that acts as a sound proofer and also as a sound deadener. So it's not only going to block sound, it's also going to absorb noise or help absorb some of the noise. The thing is with mass loaded vinyl, it is quite expensive. So, so it's not the cheapest way to soundproof a wall. It will cost you around $100 or more for the mass loaded vinyl because the more you need, the more it's going to cost. The thing is, if you buy in bulk, it's going to be cheaper. However, it comes in a roll. The roll will just be bigger. Now, mass loaded vinyl will weigh about one pound to two pounds per square foot. Now, keep that in mind. Now, let's take a step back. If you aren't willing to add some drywall, if you can't afford or is unwilling to add some mass loaded vinyl, what else can you do to the wall to make it more soundproof? Electrical outlets. Now, you would think that there's no noise coming through the electrical outlets. Let's just pretend here that you have a wall between rooms that is uninsulated. No insulation in the walls because most walls between rooms are uninsulated. And now most electrical outlets will be back to back. A lot of them, not all of them. If you go right to the electrical outlet and you start talking and you have somebody else on the other side of the room at the electrical outlet and they can, they have their ear right to it, they'll hear you quite clearly because there's a hole in the wall. And yes, there is an electrical box, but that electrical box is full of holes as well. Now the best product to use to soundproof electrical boxes of that type are putty pads. Now putty pads are great. You just wrap it around the box. It keeps it from bleeding noise and also it's fire safe. It was actually developed to contain fire if a fire were to start inside the electrical outlet. The wall needs to be open for you to do that. Now chances are your wall is finished. You can't get behind the electrical outlet box. So what do you do? Can't use putty pads? Well, let's go back to your red rooster caulking or no, red devil caulking. And no, this video is not sponsored by red devil caulking. Go get your red devil caulking and remove your electrical box cover. What you'll notice is most likely quite a big gap between the electrical box and the drywall. Now if the crack is too big for sealant then right there a lot of noise is coming in. If you can't seal it with sealant because the crack is too big then use a product called Baccarod. It's cheap you just cut a piece and you wrap it around around electrical boxes and then you add your caulking around all the cracks to make sure it is all sealed. Put your faceplate back on you might be surprised at how much noise has been reduced, then that'll work even better if you can go on the other room and do that to all the outlet covers and light switches. You will definitely notice more of a difference than just sticking an acoustic foam on the wall. After all that's done, let's talk about acoustic foams and acoustic panels because a lot of videos out there, that's all they recommend. Acoustic foam, what that will do, it'll make the room sound better. It'll deaden the noise inside the room. So it can appear that the room is a lot quieter. And if you get rid of all the echoes in the room, the noise that you're making within the room is not going to sound as loud on the other side of the room. But if you want to soundproof your room to stop noise from the outside from coming in, it's not really going to soundproof anything. They're for deadening the sound and for making the room sound better. But do you have to spend hundreds of dollars in acoustic panels or acoustic foams to achieve that? You actually don't have to do that. You can do that with things that you already own. Another way to absorb the noise inside the room and not have to spend a lot of money doing so is do you have add your second moving blanket on the wall. Now that's not going to soundproof the wall. That's not going to stop noise from coming through. It's only going to make the room sound better. And it is a lot cheaper but uglier than adding some acoustic on the wall. All right, so that's it. What do you think? Do you think these tips are achievable? If you found value in this video, I usually don't ask this, but leave a like because hopefully the algorithm will push this video above the videos that are giving you bad information and those videos are getting a lot of views and is making a lot of people buy a lot of products, spending their hard earned money on things that are just going to disappoint them. So by trying to boost this video, click like, 
leave a comment, just, just say anything. If you don't really have a question, you can just say thanks. I really appreciate the time put into it. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.